surely he died on Calvary. Certainly, put, come on, put your horns together and bless his name. Come on. Come on, come on. Surely he died on Calvary. Certainly for this most noted day, we do give God praise and thanks for sparing us and allowing us this moment in human history to lift his name, to celebrate his goodness, his mercy, and his grace. God is to be praised because God is good all the time. And all the time, God is good. Listen, we want to uh, give you opportunity if you want to give today. Uh, we do ask that you just hold your gift up out of the wonder if you have a gift with you today and you want to give. And one of our brethren will uh, come by and get it. But listen, all right, all right. I see you over there, I see you. Amen. There are some that wants to give. Amen. If you just hold it out of the window. Listen, thank you for your cooperation. Thank you for your commitment and your courage to be here today. Listen, we are not trying to expose you to uh, the coronavirus. But listen, the business of church worship, church word is more urgent than, than anything else I know. Because there's something that's more threatening than the coronavirus and it's dying lost or being unsaved. Amen. Just hold your gifts up out of, out of the window, if you will, and our brethren will come. to the deacon brethren as they have devoted us and to Brother Darrell Cotton Sound Tech brought his equipment from home thank you for assisting us in this endeavor Brother Bobby Clayton who built this very fine stage uh, the security team Sister Mary and Sister Shirley appreciate these preachers who have been here every Sunday. Reverend McCoy and Reverend Pope. And certainly to the praise team, Brother Eric and the praise team. Didn't they bless our hearts today? Amen. Brother McShawn and uh, the tech team, we do thank God for them as they are videoing and we are live and we thank God for for them and we thank God for all of you who are here to share in this celebratory occasion Jesus is not dead he's alive and well amen he's alive and well if you will, to Matthew's 28. Matthew's 28, the Gospel of Matthew. Chapter is 28. And again, we greet you in the grace and peace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. He's above all and all is beneath him. What a great day it is for us to be alive, alert, and active. For it is in him we live, move, and have our being. Even in this season of pandemic, God is not short of his promise. He is keeping us. And I just believe he will keep 
close. Matthew chapter 28. Matthew chapter 28. You have heard the reading for the responsive reading. I want to just cue in on one verse, and that's verse 6. And it says, He is not here, for he is risen. As he said, come see the place where the Lord lay. He is not here. He is risen. As he said, come see the place where the Lord lay. The reading of God's word for the people of God, the word is already blessed. May we be blessed by being hearers and doers of his holy word. I want to talk about he is risen. He is risen. Crucify Jesus, his dead body, placed in the tomb of Joseph of Arimathea. The tomb was sealed with the stone and guards were placed at the tomb to watch over it to keep the body of Jesus in and keep his disciples out. It is said in Matthew chapter 27 verse 6 to 3 that all of this was done because they remembered what Jesus had said. On the third day, the stone was rolled away from the mouth of the tomb. The tomb was empty. The Jewish high priest started an hypothesis of his stolen body. The hypothesis claimed that the body of Jesus was stolen from the grave by one of his disciples. All the Jewish high priest started the theory to hide, to hinder, and hamper the proclamation of Jesus' resurrection. They did not want the word to get out that Jesus had uh, risen from the grave. Such a word would prove that Jesus was exactly who he said he was, that he was the Son of God. I'm here to report, my brothers and sisters, that his disciples did not steal his body. Jesus did exactly what he said he would do. The third, the third day he rose from the grave. For the angel said it in verse 6 of Matthew chapter 28, for he is risen. Today we need to consider the announcement of the angel to glean the blessings and benefits of its truth. What does the statement, he is risen, mean to us today? Well, it should mean the same today as it meant over 2,000 years ago. The statement of the angel, he is risen, is a statement of assurance. It confirms the resurrection of Jesus. The resurrection of Christ is the origin, the existence, the continuance, the extension, the moral power of Christianity. On such simple but pregnant and prevailing statement, he is risen, is the very foundation of Christianity. In other words, if I am a Christian, and if you are a Christian, it's simply because he has risen. For Paul said in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 17, If Christ be not raised from the dead, our, is, our faith in him is vain, and we are yet in our sin. But I thank God that I am saved. I thank God that I am sealed. I thank God that my sins have been forgiven because I know in my heart that Jesus is not in the grave. Jesus got up out of the grave early that Sunday morning. There are three things I see in the text concerning this angel's announcement. 
uh, that serves us today. Number one, the angel's announcement was a rebuke. Number two, the angel's announcement was a reminder. And number three, the angel's announcement is reassurance. First of all, the angel's statement was a rebuke. Verses 5 and 6, the angel said to the women, Do not be afraid, for I know that you see Jesus who was crucified. He is not here, for he has risen. For the rebuke is an expression, sharp expression of disapproval of someone because of their behavior or action. Brothers and sisters, our behavior and our action stems from our belief. The, the women that came to the tomb that morning were seeking a dead Jesus. They were seeking Jesus' body in the grave. So the angels spoke words of rebuke because they were looking for the body of Jesus in the tomb. The women came early Sunday morning to finish preparing Jesus' body. The fact that they came seeking to anoint his body early that Sunday morning is an indicator that they thought he was still dead. All the women thought Jesus was still in the grave. And the angel said, he is not here, he is risen. The rebuke was good because it served to correct the false notion the women had concerning Jesus' resurrection. The women had wandered from the truth and the angel's announcement brought them back. Brothers and sisters, uh, the, the women of that day are not the only ones who have wandered from the truth. There are many people today who needs to be rebuked. Many have wandered away from the truth. Some years ago, film producer or filmmaker James Cameron and his director made a startling claim that Jesus wasn't resurrection, resurrected. They said Jesus gave, uh, uh, they started to claim that Jesus' body was still in the grave and the grave had been discovered, wandering from the truth. All the angel statement serves as a rebuke for all people who think that Jesus is still dead and in the grave. All we need to be rebuked because we need our faith right. We need our confidence in Christ right. We need uh, our uh, faith in him focus because if we don't have the right focus of faith, we are still in our sin. We need to be rebuked. James chapter 5 verse 19 and 20 says, My brethren, if anyone among you wanders from the truth and someone brings him back, let him know that whoever brings back a sinner from his wandering will save his soul from death and will cover a multitude of sin. I came this morning to tell you, don't seek the living among the dead. Jesus is not in the grave. Not only is the angel's announcement a rebuke, but the angel's announcement is a reminder. It's a reminder. Notice uh, C, C clause says, as he said. In other words, the angels reminded the women of what Jesus told them while he was with them in Galilee. Luke's account goes further in detail about the reminder. Luke 24, 6 through 8 says, Remember how he spoke unto you when he was yet, uh, when he was yet in Galilee, saying, The Son of Man must be crucified or delivered into the hands of sinful men and be crucified and on the third day rise again. And they remembered his words. The angels of the Lord had to remind 
the women. He reminded the women because they didn't seriously regard Jesus' often repeated announcement of his death and resurrection seriously. The angel reminded them. He took them back to the word of God. Matthew chapter 12 verse 40. For as Jonah was three days and three nights in the well's belly, so shall the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. Matthew 16, 21. From that time forth began Jesus to show unto his disciples how that he must go unto Jerusalem and suffer many things of the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and be raised again the third day. Matthew 17, 23. And they shall kill him. And the third day he shall be raised again. Matthew 20, verse 19, and shall deliver him to the Gentiles to mock and to scourge and to be crucified. And the third day he shall rise again. My brothers and sisters, you can only be reminded of something when you have been informed of it. In other words, you can't be reminded of something that you have not heard before. To be reminded simply means to cause to remember. Remember means to, call, to bring to mind or think of again. The women had the words of Jesus within their hearts and the angel of the Lord only had to bring to remembrance what they heard Jesus say. Oh, brothers and sisters, we need to hide the word of the Lord in our hearts because when times are tough and when times are rough, we need to be able to recall the word of God. That's what the psalmist said. Thy word have I hid in my heart so that I might not sin against thee. We need the word of the Lord in our heart. They were reminded. Times had got tough. Times had gotten rough. And they needed a reminder. And I think in this season, we need a reminder that we still have a living Savior. We need a reminder that got up. Uh, we, need, we need to be reminded that he got up. And if he got up out of the grave, he can handle anything else that we are going through. We need to be reminded that our souls are secure in Jesus because Jesus got up that Sunday morning. My brothers and sisters, they had gotten low. And we must admit that there are times that our confidence gets low. We don't always feel strong. We don't always feel full of confidence. We get low. But thanks be to God that God gives us a reassuring word and a reminder that all is well in Christ. But not only, brothers and sisters, do I see that this announcement serves as a rebuke and a reminder, but thirdly, I see that this announcement serves as reassurance. The resurrection of Christ gives all Christians confidence. The announcement restores the confidence of the women that went to the grave that morning to anoint the body of Christ. The announcement also restores the confidence of the disciples who heard the word from the women that Jesus is not dead. He is risen. The announcement gave them back their confidence in the Lord. They had lost it. Look at them, if you will, walking around grief-stricken, walking around wondering what they were going to do next, walking around with their heads hung low, because their confidence was devastated. But my brothers and sisters, 
I'm thankful that Jesus doesn't leave us alone. That Jesus doesn't leave us with our heads hung down. I'm thankful, brothers and sisters, that Jesus knows how to reassure us that all is well. And that's all I came to tell you, that all is well. We, we may be in terrible times, and we may be in tough times, but there's assurance that comes from heaven this morning that all is well. <laughs> Do I have a witness? If you hear me this morning, you ought to honk your horns and tell your neighbor that all is well. Jesus got up that Sunday morning with all power in his hands. He showed himself to the women that came to the tomb early that morning. The women went running to take the 11 disciples that Jesus had got up out of the way. The 11 disciples they were still devastated in disbelief. But I thank God that Jesus showed himself to the 11 disciples. They were all eyewitnesses. Not only did he show himself to the women and the disciples, but he showed himself to over 500 witnesses. Thank God! But not only did he show himself to the 500 witnesses and the 11 disciples and the women who went to the tomb early that morning, he showed himself to Paul when he was Saul or while he was on his way to Damascus to arrest the Christians. He saw a light and he heard a voice and Jesus said, Saul, Saul, why persecute thou me? It is hard to kick against the prince. He showed himself to Paul. He showed himself to the women at the tomb. He showed himself to the 11 disciples who was in Galilee. He showed himself to over 500 witnesses. He showed himself to two men who was walking to Emmaus. I thank God that they were eyewitnesses, but I'm not an eyewitness. I'm a soul witness. Do I have a witness? I'm a soul witness because one Monday night I felt the Lord moving on the altars of my heart. I know he's not dead because that Monday night he picked me up out the muck and the mud clay and he placed my feet on a solid rock to stay. I'm not an eyewitness. I'm a soul witness. I know he's in my heart because every round is getting higher. Thank the Lord. He put clapping in my hands. He put a song in my heart. He put peace in my mind. He made my joy full. I feel like running and I feel like crying. And let me ask you one more time. Easter morning, ain't the Lord on? Yeah! 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 That's enough. That's enough. Listen. Listen. We preach Christ because Christ rose from the dead. This day is a celebratory 
expression of Christ's resurrection. This is a moment for all Christians to praise him and to worship him, to appreciate him for all he has done for us on Calvary's cross and how he opened the door to the grave that the grave hell no longer holds us. The Bible says when he died, he went down into the Lord's parts and led captivity captive. He opened the door to that place that held Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Jacob Moses, Lazarus. And many others that had died before he died on the cross. They were looking forward. They were looking forward to his coming. They were looking forward to his sacrificial death. They believed they had faith in him. And listen, that's exactly what he wants us to do. He wants us to put our faith in Christ. Listen, I know the seriousness of time. But listen, the truth is there's coming a time where time will be no more. The Bible says it is appointed on the man wants to die. And I want you to know that if your soul is not anchored in Jesus, there's a place called hell. And hell is real just like heaven. And the reason we preach and the reason we do this is to make sure that people, even in this season, can hear the word of Christ and know that Jesus is Lord. He's Savior. As you're listening, if you have not placed your faith in Him, please do that today. Give Him your heart. Give Him your soul. Let Him be the caretaker and the captain of your life. Let Him save you. If you haven't done that, please do that today. Listen, those of you who are listening by way of live streaming and sermon archives, if Christ is not Lord of your life, please make him Lord of your life today. That's why I have such a conviction because people are dying. They're dying from the coronavirus, car accidents, murder, suicide, cancer, and the list goes on and on, and, and, you know, my concern is people being saved, that's my heart, be saved, be saved, be saved, be saved, listen, those of you who are here, go back and make sure everybody in the house saved. If they don't believe Jesus has risen, rebuke them by way of the word. Remind them of what Jesus has said. And reassure them of what he said, in what he said, and reassure them of his return. God bless you today. Listen, every head bowed, every eye closed. Father, we thank you today for your love, your sacrifice. We thank you for your son dying on that old rugged cross for us. And we thank you for raising him up that we might have life and life more abundantly. Be with us, your people, Lord. Protect us and keep us. And as Paul said, Lord, for us to live is Christ and for us to die is gain. We don't know, but we know you. So be with us. 
stand by us, lead and guide us and protect us, provide for us.